profound identification with the ancient Israelites crystallized into a theology known as Hebrew Israelism. As far back as the plantation, if you listen to a lot of old Negro spirituals, wade in the water, go down Moses, but they are spiritually connecting to the strength of Israel. It's not necessarily just about identity. It's about a sort of like spiritual connection to God. No two groups of Hebrew Israelites were quite alike. Some worshiped in a style nearly identical to Pentecostal Christianity, with Jesus front and center. Others adopted mainstream Jewish practices. Some mashed up the two and added a dash of African nationalism. No matter how they practiced, all congregations believed they were the descendants of the ancient Israelites who had once been enslaved in Egypt. But here's the crazy part that we never see mentioned in history textbooks. It's possible that some enslaved Africans identified so strongly with the Israelites because they were Jews, or at least of Jewish descent. After all, there's been a Jewish presence in Africa for thousands of years. You may be familiar with the Igbo of Nigeria or the Beta Israel of Ethiopia, but did you know that there were enough Jews in the West African Songhai Empire for the king to issue an edict of expulsion in 1492? So we shouldn't dismiss the possibility that at least some Africans held Jewish or Israelite identities well before their enslavement in the Americas. For the most part, early Hebrew Israelite communities got along with mainstream Ashkenazi and Sephardi Jews. But there's always got to be one maniac. A maniac is Arabic slash Hebrew slang for a jerk. In the 1880s, that maniac was one Frank S. Cherry, a self-proclaimed prophet and founder of one of the earliest Hebrew Israelite communities. The Church of the Living God, the pillar ground of truth for all nations. Unlike other Hebrew Israelite congregations, Cherry believed that black Americans were the only real Israelites, which made non-black Jews usurpers of their identity and heritage. Cherry's Shabbat services often involved long sermons about the evils of the Jews who would get what was coming to them in the year 2000 when Jesus would return to start a race war that would end with white folks in chains. Obviously, I'm not going to spend time debunking the unhinged theology of a man who believed that the earth was square. Did I not mention that? That was big for Cherry. But I do have to address one of his ideas, because unfortunately, it's one that a lot of people share. That Jews are white Europeans. That's completely false. Jews are a Semitic people. Our culture, our nation, and our identity originated in the land of Israel. Add in a couple millennia of exile that sent us to every corner of the earth, and you get a vast and dazzling variety of ways to look and be Jewish. So yeah, there are a lot of reasons that I don't love Frank Cherry's ideology. And I want to stress, neither did most Hebrew Israelites. In fact, some of the founders of later Hebrew Israelite congregations were mixed race Jews of color, adding an extra dimension to their identity. So where do they belong? Are they Jews? Are they Hebrew Israelites? They belong. Are they Jews? Are they Hebrew Israelites? Are they both? Well, again, that really depends on who you ask. So I ask, in short, the Hebrew Israelite community is pretty diverse. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors and salute to you, other brethren, you fellow believers of this truth, and shalom to the elect. So, I want to go in this video here. This video is titled Are Radical Hebrew Israelites the Real Jews? So this is what I want to go at first before getting to you know before starting a lesson or getting to the scripture. Years ago when um, we was in Christianity the majority of us you now you had men out who already knew we were Israelites but I'm saying the majority of us Never, there, there was never once anybody who came up and said, well, you know what? You you people could be Jews too. Now, this information had to be there. But now, all of a sudden, that the full-blown truth is out, now they're trying to tweak it and they bring this guy in who looks like a Jake and he still could be an Israelite. He has, he has that look. I notice now that that's what they're doing. They're getting people that look like us and they prompt them up there on the stoop, so to speak, <laughs> and tell us or, or replace theology, so, so to speak. You know? But the, And then he goes on to say he was doing good, but then he says it started here and this where it was, and then it branched out, and then you became like you are. wonder how did that work? And then he says something about the Europeans and 
you know, we know the real the original Europeans. There's a lot you can't say, but this is definitely, you know, kind of weird how now they're trying to bring forth some truth and then they're trying to remix it and re-scratch it and feed you something else as if to admit now, yes, these people, some of these people can be. And notice he only marked a part of the West Africa in 1492. <laughs> when the majority of us went down into Africa and in Europe, you had the, the uh, Moors of Spain, right? We went in uh, and various other places, different parts of Europe. We migrated there as if Israel and Africa are just so far apart. No, we were there. And then we come over here on the slave trade, and he says only some of them could be. No, a lot. And then it's backed up in Scripture. In Deuteronomy 28 and 64, they didn't want to admit that even. 48, when it says, um, and thou shalt have a yoke of iron upon thy neck. It's too much evidence. You hate it. You set up black preachers. You told us what you told us. But now it's coming out. Deuteronomy 28 and 64 says, I will scatter thee for one end of the earth even to the other. That's everywhere. But somehow, there's people that set up in the land and say, well, it's only us. It was all good when it was only them and nobody else uh, could be a part of it. But now it's coming out. They set this Jake looking guy up and says, well, wait a minute. It is proof that some of you are this and some of you that. You see what they're doing? They're trying to snatch it back and feed it to you. They're trying to remaster it. So anyway, I just want to go into this thing about the being radical. Now, um, somebody on here states hate groups should never be tolerated no matter if they are against blacks you know can't say the LG and everything else disabled persons or any other what the heck is disabled persons got to, I don't know they have to, uh, uh, to be fought because they don't understand another language and this is what happens when you get a lot of views but this whole country was taken by force through hate, right? The world through hate. Did you see the slaughter of the Native Americans? Did you see that what happened to the Taino Indians? Slaughtered almost down to nothing, to the so-called black man brought from West Africa. And it was reported that one of the first slaves came out of Spain, right? Uh, uh, some children, a young boy or whatever. I don't, you know, it's being, more and more things are coming out. It wasn't just West Africa. But that's where they knew where most of the Hebrews were. This is crazy, man. So he calls us radical. So let's look up this word radical. Um, the word radical, I looked in the online etymology. It says relating or proceeding from a root, such as growing from the root of a plant where you get the term free radicals in your body. Roots, that's kind of growing out of control is why they consider it a radical. It's growing out of control. Why would it grow out of control? And this is what they're going to do, label it as such, when there was nothing but how everything got set up was nothing but through that ideology. So when did it change? You know, make the people sheeple, make the people simple, and then... Uh, go along, get along, as long as we continue to uh, continue to oppress you and, and uh, you know, destroy you. Anyway, let's get some examples. Now, Yahweh Shah would have considered a radical man because when he came on the scene, he said he was the son of the Most High. The other uh, Israelites didn't like it. They couldn't believe it. He started doing miracles. And then more and more following, more and more followings came, and the more <laughs> followings came, the more they seen it as a radical religion. And they don't even believe in Yahweh Shah. So true. All, all of them got mixed up. A lot of a lot of religions and beliefs 
in heritages got mess, mixed up. But now, the language that the people speak that he's talking about, he's pulling out some Hebrew. Well, they got a little bit of Poland, German, French, Russian, and everything else. So, I don't know. We're talking about radical. Matthew 21 and 12. And Yahweh went into the temple of Yahweh. It says Jesus went to the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and brought in the temple. Right? Because you had wicked Pharisees, you had these Jews who felt like they was actually as the law was going on, it was creating and adding things to the, you know, to the law of what you can do and what you can't do. And, and um, they became powerful in that, that law. Anyway, it says, and over through the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Sounds like a radical to me. And said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye, ye have made it a den of thieves. So Daniel I believe it's Daniel 7, 18 says this, I believe, says the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom. So it's not going to be just given like the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. There's going to be some so-called radical behavior when that time comes. It always have, and until the kingdom is set up and the earth is at rest is when the so-called radicalism stops. Didn't he say in Job 3, I would gather the nations and bring them in the place of Yahweh's judgment? This is all so-called radical behavior. We can go through so many scriptures in the book of Joshua, so many stories of what they would consider radical, right? Radical behavior. The Israelites, well, see, this is the, and that's the problem. They're trying to take you, Jake, and make you, you know, softer, right? Now, we're not, we don't teach to go out there and be so-called radical, screaming and cursing out everybody, you know. It, it, you know, we, we go out there and teach. We do, do, do the Lord's work and try to reach the elect. But they see it as radical because there are some groups who are so-called radical, right? They <laughs> stand on the corner and just curse out white people. Well, you got to read the spirit. That's another thing. There, there are Israelites who will look like him, right? This guy and some uh, Edomites who will look like him, right? He's the prime example. Okay. Um, let's go to, I'll try to make this quick. It was more than that. Numbers 25 and 26. Um, uh, number 25 and 10 it says nope this is yeah this is numbers 25 and 10 it says and behold one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle right of the congregation and when Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of uh, the son of Aaron, it should have been. It says, "Wait a minute, Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron." Right, he was the grandson of Aaron. Right, and the priest saw saw it. He rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in the hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent, and thrust both of them through the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So he was on top of this woman, not because he had, he wanted to decide to mess with a, a media, media night woman. It's because of following the customs. When you go into it and do the research, that's what he was doing. And the Lord was not about bringing any corruption in Israel. And the Lord's still about that. But when the, when, when the time of the awakening and he set up the kingdom, there wouldn't be no corruption. So the plague was stayed 
from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were 20 and 4,000. Right? What was this plague? The following of the worshiping of other gods. Now, when you look up Phineas, the real terminology of Phineas means the mouth of brass. And when you go into the mouth of brass, even the scholars say he was called the Egyptian Negro or Nubian, which was black. So if Phineas was the grandson of Aaron, um, son of Eleazar, then we could see the lineage of them had to be black. And that's what we're saying. This man is saying that they all started someplace and basically saying they look like them when they started there. When clearly there's proof, archaeological proof, there's all kind of proof that's showing that these Israelites were so-called black. <clears throat> Over time and being scattered, that's when we start, started to change and look like different nations, right? So my question is, why didn't this guy go into the fact that all this information, this history is here, but it took us to go out and start teaching and bring out the truth just so you could say, well, those people are, are Jews too. Now, and it was well known that those people practiced that, but nobody else over here knew. So I kind of you like kind of like you kept it a secret, didn't you? So these are examples of so-called radicalism, right? Numbers 12 and 7. My servant Moses is not so. Who is faithful of all mine house? With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, right? And not to uh, not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall uh, he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, talking about Aaron, Miriam and Aaron, right? And, and, um, and he departed and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold Miriam became leprous right white as snow and Aaron looked upon Miriam and behold she was leprous so you know when he had to see this he was like what <clears throat> he, like, he said man she didn't turn white and she was probably pretty dark this is why it says that because to be white would it be considered leprous now our people are looking leprous now because of the curse and Aaron said unto Moses alas my lord now this is Aaron I read this carefully this is Aaron calling Moses lord which Aaron is the older brother of Moses and he said alas my lord I beseech thee lay not this sin upon us and when you remember back the most high blessed Moses or showed the power when he put his hand in the bosom and, the, and his hands came out white and he's saying uh, you know if Aaron saw it like that he's saying well lay not that sin upon us and this was considered a sin to be leprous as white as snow where we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned let her not be as one dead <laughs> it's what it says of one the flesh is half consumed so you mean to tell me and this is proven the reason why I'm going into this because the Israelites would have been so called black and these are so called radical behaviors and they consider it radical because the roots are springing up and it's getting out of control according to them but as we come back into our heritage it always did get out of control or so-called to the to the opposition because they don't want to lose that blessing I was blessed with the sword um, it says let her not be as one dead or one half the flesh and Moses cried unto the Lord saying heal her now O God I beseech thee and the Lord said unto Moses if her father had uh, but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days. And that's mediocre. That's minute to the Lord, man. But mind you, that curse had to go on 
Imagine have to walk seven days like that. And after that, let her be received again. So she, she woke back up, you know, and, and then she would have had to hide herself, you know, they would consider you dead. Like, like you see the zombies. So the Lord Moses wanted to heal her or let the Lord heal her because everything went through the Lord. But hey, you see what happened. So anyway, that's pretty much all I have on this. Uh, this guy just not telling the whole fine print. He did a spin in the twist. He said it was all about um, who who they were and not us and it vice versa did, so to speak. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.